Hey, this is me, a girl. I'm that chick, Linda. Nobody's telling me what to do, so I'm highly unqualified. I basically don't know what I'm doing. Hi, I'm Linda Nyangweso. Welcome back to Highly Unqualified. Today, I'm gonna try and talk about something a little more serious. Now, here's the thing. Um, I read a study by the APA, which is the American Psychological um, Association. They did the study on sexualization of girls. And they questioned a few people, people of our mom's generation, so women in their 50s, 60s. And those women said that the first time they felt sexualized, they were between the ages of maybe 16 to 18. The same study, they asked questions to people in our generation, so millennials, and the first time they felt sexualized was between the ages of 11 and 12. So you see how it's like, and then on top of it, which pretty much leads the study to saying that our kids, now millennials, children, they're gonna feel sexualized at an even earlier age. And it scared me, because I'm like, what could possibly be earlier than 11? It's ridiculous to me, right? And then it came at a time when I was reading this study that um, I also came across the hashtag Me Too. And it was started um, years ago, 10 years ago, by a black activist named Tarana Burke. And Tarana Burke started this whole thing where women could talk about being um, sexually harassed and um, how it's easily acceptable in society. And even us as women, we accept it because we think it's just a part of everyday life. And then with the whole um, Harvey Weinstein drama, Alyssa Milano started it properly now on social media where women shared their experiences. And I actually took part in this... Um, Hashtag me too as well, because I felt like it's about time. And the truth is, after talking to the men in my life and the men around me, most men didn't know this happens. And the truth is, most of the times, I'm just gonna give it from my experience, when you're walking around Nairobi, when you feel sexualized by men, um, you know, they're shouting and they're heckling you and they're, you know, hey, Madame size Yango, you know, if you're with another man, they don't do it. But when you're alone, I guess it's okay. So this led me to think about when was the first time I figured out sex in general? And I realized that my first discussion of sex, as much as I was considered I never got the sex talk from my parents, I actually did. My mom sat me down, I'll never forget this. It was so embarrassing. I, w I must have been like eight or nine, and I was in school, and there was a little girl named Mariam, I'll never forget, and she was running around saying, ha ha ha, sex, your parents had sex, and we didn't know what it was, so we're all doing it. And then the nun in the school sat us down, and she's like, well, now you're gonna have to go home and ask your mom what sex is. So of course, I went home, asked my mom and my dad what sex is. My dad was like, I need a drink. He walked away, got a whiskey, and then sat down quietly, twiddling his thumbs, trying not to look as awkward as ever. And my mom did all the talking. My mom, however, kind of sugar-coated sex for me. She told me sex was when two people in love have a special hug. So I was assumed, you know, like, you hug a little extra and you have a baby. <laughs> That's how bad it was, right? And then I keep thinking, now that we know that our children are gonna get sexualized at an even earlier age, I need to start thinking about how I'm gonna give my daughter the sex talk, or my niece. I, I, I have no idea where to start. So of course, I went to the original, the OG source of my sexual education, my mother. And I asked her <laughs> to give me the sex talk. If she could give me the sex talk all over again, what would she say? This is my mother, Phoebe. Or Chidi. I'm not allowed to call her Chidi, but we're on camera, so I'm a grown-up. On this episode, we're talking about um, sex, but not in the way you think. Here's the brief, and I'm doing this, and I never told her before because I didn't want her to run away. So when I was around, I think, 12, she had the sex talk with me, as embarrassing as it sounded. And she jokes that she wishes there was alcohol when she was doing that, and so, she vodka. I usually do wine, but today, the hard stuff. So we're gonna take a shot, and then I want you to tell me all the things you wish you had told me about sex when I was younger. That's my baby in the background, because <laughs> we're classy. <laughs> Howie, shh. All right, shot, and you have to drink it all down at once. All right, cheers to sex and talking to your mom. Come on, come on. Good girl. Okay. Let's do this. I need some water. You don't need water, it's a shot. <laughs> it's called the oh. spirit oh. for a reason. Let it lead you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to die. 
Yeah, I'm gonna die. If you die, I'll be here to bury you. So what things do you wish you'd have told me about sex when I was younger? That it's not a sin unless, of course, you're not married. Sex is not a sin. Um, I wish I'd been a little more not so t uptight. Uh, because you're living, uh, you have different challenges as you're a teenager. So mm -hmm. I wish I'd said, if, you know, I wish I'd been a little more upfront. I was, you know, I, I sort of just gave the Bible story. Mm -hmm. But I didn't give you like how to protect yourself, how to how not to think about it as if it's um, I don't know like something forbidden, mm -hmm. but not in that way. Like I I I didn't want you to I, I wouldn't have obviously wanted you to think it's okay, mm -hmm. but just to understand that it's mm -hmm. it's it's not a bad thing. But it's also, it has its time and place. Yes. Thank you. When was the first time you felt like a man treated you like property? Could have been in high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What happened? When they feel entitled. Yes. I won't go into the story about what happened. Okay, uh, so that's my mom and soon we're gonna have to take a shot because I wanted to ask her The best sex advice she ever got because the truth is most of us get our sex advice Usually in baby showers not baby showers wrong baby showers. You already know what sex is by then I mean like bridal showers or you know like girl talk chit chat or um, where you feel like you know, you have to almost edit yourself because men are allowed to be sexy and sexualized and be, you know, sexual. What's the word I'm looking for? Sexual people with penises. While women, <laughs> you have to be a little more, you know, coy about it. So, of course, I had to ask her, what is the best sex advice you ever got and what is the worst sex advice you ever got? Okay. What is the best sex advice you ever got? I ever got from yeah. my grandmother. Whoa! Yes, Tamboure yes, for the win, uh huh? Yes, yes. What did she say? Uh, she said, if you're gonna do anything, you, you, you know, you should enjoy yourself. I took it. Let's go. Great go go. Mm -hmm. She did. <gasps> Maybe I need another shot. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Don't, and what is the, don't be half about it. Okay. What is the worst sex advice anyone ever gave you? Yeah, uh, what sex advice? Mm -hmm. I think my girlfriends from high school, I mean, we, they, well, it was a conversation. It wasn't advice. Mm -hmm. It was a conversation. Yeah. And they said? Um, my cousin's in the room. She's afraid to pass. say it. No, you have to say it. Pass. Do you know what the worst sex advice I ever got? No. And from who again? I'm going to tell you. The worst sex advice I ever got, even if you don't really like it, just do it for your husband. That is the worst sex advice ever. Don't do it. It's consensual between two people. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. My my grandmother didn't, she was not that graphic. She just said, if you want to enjoy it, enjoy it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. So from my mother, do it 100%. Yeah, or well, don't do it. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. You know, learn a few things about what you're doing and... Um, know what you're getting into mm -hmm. you know when I say getting into I mean like you know just get to know <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. so that was my mom talking about sex it never gets less awkward but I love her so much I feel like we've become friends now and we can talk about these things this is the kind of conversations we need to have and we need to be open and honest and we need to be able to talk about everything to do with sex, even hashtag me too. Use it, cause it's a worldwide thing. I mean, you don't have to give everything, but we all have to just stand in unity, especially as women, because I think no one's going to start talking about it and to make it okay to talk about, unless we do. And also, if you have men in your life who genuinely, genuinely don't know anything about this, let them watch this video. Um, Google hashtag me too, read all the, the things about it, no. I mean, owning a vagina did not come with a manual, but you know what, you're gonna kick ass.